Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Feed the Beast Stone Block 3. Today we're going to be finishing off this giant contraption that I have been working on for, what, two other episodes? So this will make three total? Ugh. But hey, it's been a fun journey. I always enjoy a little bit of immersive engineering. I just like to have the plan before I start, and this one kind of had to evolve. So rather than expanding out further into this area, I feel I needed to expand up. So I have added in some scaffolds with some structural steel structural arms up there. Uh, also, I've got access to the little workshop area back here for the immersive engineering spot. I just wanted to make it a little bit more practical. Uh, this actually seems just about right to me, because I don't know if you guys have been in, like, generator rooms and things like that. There's often, like, some kind of little workbench or something hidden back in there so that people can work on stuff in a, in a large building. Well, that just made sense to me. And I did do a little bit of testing with the garden cloche. It is producing two seeds to one of the um, these here, the industrial hemp fibers. It's making a two to one for the seeds to the hemp fiber. So, yeah, I decided to just go for that instead of the, uh, the phytogenic insulator, which the multi-servo press has been doing just fine with processing everything, plant oil, still sticking with the potatoes. Now we just need to get the crusher with some sulfates being produced from it somehow going into this and this is the problem is that when you look at this it's got liquid liquid and then there's the solid for the catalyst now technically i don't really need a ton of biodiesel so i could manually put it in there i want to know if i can actually somehow uh automate putting it in there i don't know if just putting a hopper on top of the refinery is actually going to do it or something like that or some kind of uh wired connection but when i try hooking up like an item pipe to one of the inputs on the sides that are uh, on either side, which by the way, um, I replaced it with a pipe, an immersive engineering pipe. I'll show you guys here, the uh, these here. Uh, when I try connecting it to either of end of those, it only accepts fluid. But if you take some steel scaffolding on the immersive version, then you can actually hide the pipe properly, which I thought was kind of cool, and it's a little bit less exposed. This is a little bit safer, not quite OSHA compliant, but at least it's a little bit closer. Uh, so I don't know how to actually insert solids into this thing yet. And until I get some of those sulfates, I don't really want to try. So let's get into making a crusher. Now I did take a look at this. I've got the ingredients already set in my inventory, so it shouldn't take me very long to set this up. But it is, of course, a lot of scaffolding, a lot of engineering blocks, uh, a bit of steel fencing. Then there's a red engineering block or a redstone engineering block and a whole bunch of hoppers uh, because the uh, sand is going to need to be dropped in on the top. Now, I don't know if I can actually process this in one way or another, but I, I think I'm going to go with something a little bit creative and it, it might not be the best solution. We'll, we'll see. And there we have it, quest completed. We have a crusher uh, in place here. Let's actually jump down so you can have a look. There we go, and you can see it has some crushing blades in the top there. You don't want to walk in yourself, you will get crushed. Um, so uh, I was talking about OSHA compliant. Yeah, this thing's really, really dangerous. But we can still drop things in here, whether it be via conveyor belt or something else. But now that we've got power going to it, and I'm trying to figure out where the placement is, I think... Right here, there's one block space opening in the middle, and I'm going to want to put something above this. I don't know that I can actually place something here. Yeah, not, not easily in the middle at the very least. But I'm going to try putting an open crate. Now, I'm probably going to regret this, because that's just going to drop things in the world, and that, that could start making a big mess. Uh, but I'm going to start with this, and we'll see how it goes. Then, of course, I'm going to put a roost down with a sand chicken, which is immediately going to start producing things. And I've got a couple of item pipes that I can just do something like that. Oh, I wasn't expecting it to try and connect to the, uh, the crusher itself. Can I just directly pipe this into the crusher? That's interesting. That should hopefully help my uh, magnet prevent from picking things up too simply at the very least. So let's take a drawer, put it at the front here and then see if anything even happens. I don't see it actually working. Lever's on or off. It's got power. I can clearly see that. It has stuff being thrown into it. Oh, that's the problem. It needs to be sandstone. Whoops. Okay, I'll need to move this up a little bit. 
So it seems we're going to need a crafter up here for a 2x2 two two recipe. And if I take this, let's see about putting some of these in here, apply, and then that should automatically craft sand into a 2x2. Two two. Every time I put these things away, I swear I need a new one. But that should get it power. Yep, it's got power. Then we just need the eggs being uh, produced and piped into there. So I could have chicken here with the sand being produced and then just one piece of item pipe uh, coming out the side of that like this then there and that should work sand is being made it's making sandstone excellent then I just need to upgrade this back side so that it will automatically go into the open crate Hey, there we go. We now have the proper input. And because I've got the only opening covered on this, it's actually pretty safe to work with. And let's put a whole bunch of sand in here to be processed. Nice. And I'm getting excess sand from this. I forgot about that. It's, uh, so I need uh, multiple drawers in here, not just one facing. Otherwise, this is going to be a big pile. Yeah, okay, so this isn't working at all. <laughs> it just wants to spit the things out, which is kind of funny, uh, all things considered. And I probably will need to move that solignolia a bit closer. But I think what I'm going to have to do is put some kind of hopper or conveyor belt here um, from this item down to those. And while I think of it, since I've got the material I need now, I mean, it's making the stuff that I want. What happens if I just try and pipe some of this in? Hmm, at least it doesn't fit there at least. Let's just find out what happens when I put one in there. How much that ends up using for this process to actually happen. Oh, it's been working. I've been looking at this thing like wondering what is happening. I don't understand. And here it is. It's the, the biodiesel tank here that I put. The jumbo tank has been getting filled with biodiesel. Okay, well that's good. <laughs> Boy, I've been feeling a bit silly now. Before everything goes away, though, I want a little bit of bucket of some of each of these things so that I have them for filters, as well as maybe for future use. Uh, specifically the plant oil, because I still need to make some uh, upgrades. Oh, I see some items over here. Some upgrades for the drill. Um, yeah, and that is still just kind of kicking things out right now. So I don't have a way for it to actually work properly. That's kind of weird uh, for me to get the items in there except manually, is it? Wait, is it? Do I just need the one? The nitrate isn't being used. Did I just need to make this for one piece of nitrate dust? There we go. For the time being, I think I'm just going to have some of this being made this way. Uh, it's catching things, but my magnet is still messing things up. And I am going to have the sand probably voided or something like that. Hmm. There we go. Solignolia up there. Maybe that'll help prevent me from picking most of this stuff up anymore. Yeah, there we are. And at least it's picking up the drops. I mean, it's not the most efficient solution whatsoever. In fact, it's pretty bad because it, it's popping into the world. I, I don't like that at all. Um, but I do have 74 buckets of biodiesel right now. And let's put together the last parts of this drill while that is currently processing in the form of some advanced lubrication that I was looking for before. should be able to make these because I made a few buckets. Uh, I don't know why I just made three of those because I only need one piece, but maybe I can use it on, a, on another tool. But there we go. I now have the complete mining drill. Oh, and I got a rare shader grab bag. <gasps> Ooh. Oh. With this, I might be able to make myself a villager so that I can get different ones. Here we go here. There's villager, testificate with a degree. The outfitter may not seem like a traditional engineer, although their field of work is no less precise. Whereas others manufacture components and assemble large structures, they instead design unique color patterns known as shaders. They sell shader grab bags, enabling you to randomly acquire pieces of their craft. Their workstation is a shader banner, which is created by using a shader on a normal placed banner. Okay, so if I put... A banner down. How is this going to keep a villager in? This is really weird. Oh, excuse me. I need you to go. You're not, you're not welcome here. All right. So I've got this guy here. Let's close the door for now because he's probably going to try running away real quick. Uh, in fact, let's keep you a little bit safer. There we go. Get in there. So if I break this out, and yes, I put the, the magma blocks there because it stops them from trying to path out 
which is kind of nice. Um, but if I put this down, and then I use one of these, that gave me a, sh a shader. Do I actually... Oh, there we go. Oh, that's cool. I didn't realize that you could do that. So can I put him down? You can walk through these, though. He might not. Let's find out. Worst case, he walks through it once. Uh, otherwise, that seems to be working. He's not walking anywhere, so I can click on him. Actually, let, let's have a, a sneak. Yep, yep, you've you've turned into an outfitter for certain. And you have common shader grab bags. Nice! So now I could easily trade for a bunch of common shaders, level him up as usual, and because he was one of the ones that I converted from a zombie, I get these things really, really cheap. For those that don't know what shaders do, you see the uh, the texture here of the the drill itself. If I put a shader on here, it changes the texture to look a little bit more interesting. Sometimes really, really interesting. So here's that masterwork shader that is currently in place. Looks really cool. I do like it. But I think I might actually go with this one here. It's called Micro Shark. Uh, I think it's inspired from Terraria. I'm going to put this uh, one back in here. And it looks really cool because it's got like the little uh, like shark teeth on the side. Plus it just looks really neat uh, in my offhand. And now I have this little beauty here that I can use to drill things with. But first I'm going to need to fill it up. And there we go. Just by clicking on here I automatically fill it. And you can see it has a full tank. But better than that I'm going to store some for future me by taking some jerry cans and filling those up with biofuel as well. Each one of these stores 10,000 uh, millibuckets or 10 buckets worth, and this has four buckets in it currently. It also does 11 attack damage on its own, which is pretty darn good just by using it <laughs> like, like that. Uh, but I'm going to try using this. We're going to see about, let's, let's zoom back out here. I'm going to teleport all the way down here. Then we're going to try drilling over to this structure, which I think... I can't tell if it's above or below. Either way, uh, I don't think it's too bad. Let me put away some of my stuff. In fact, I'm going to put away the iron the iron amethyst bronze sledgehammer because I don't think I'm going to need that for some time at least. At least I hope not. Something else I did, I've chunk loaded this area so I should be able to access my inventory all the way at the end of the tunnels. You can see I'm now down here instead of at the base. I can now access my inventory <laughs> And uh, yeah, just go from there. Oops, I, I may have clicked while I was still standing on one of those. But yeah, that's that's pretty good. Now let's see how good this does. That That's just one block at a time. Why was it only doing one block? So it hasn't used any fuel, and I'm currently just drilling one block at a time. That's confusing. Let me see if there's been updates to the drill that I'm not familiar with. Okay, so it's currently saying you can also sneak and right-click to change the drill into single block mode. So if I switch the dig single block dig multiple blocks. So why are you only digging one block? Okay, I'm still confused. Because usually you just sneak and you can drill one block. Now it did say it's dependent upon the drill head that's used. So what if I use one of these? And in fact you think, alright, well don't you have to go all the way back to base? I don't because I have a maintenance kit. And with this I can then pop something like this in here and I can switch out the different pieces. So it now has an iron head instead of the steel one, and we can see if that makes a difference. Nope. Okay, and if I sneak right click, single block, and multiple blocks, it just does not want to do it. This seems like it's some kind of bug to me. So let's try an experiment here. If I put a bunch of cobblestone, I'm wondering if because it's stone block and there are certain restrictions for mining areas of blocks, it's just fine with regular stone, but then as soon as, or regular cobble, but then as soon as it hits regular stone, it doesn't want to do it. Oh, well, this was an eye opening experience, if I do say so myself. Uh, so, this item, which isn't that powerful to begin with, has been nerfed very hard. In fact, I'm going to go with the easiest method I can think of possible to resume with this. And I think I'll also put this in here. Actually, can I repair uh, this drill, I wonder? If I put it in here, take this out, does it automatically repair? 
Nope, it does not seem to be affected by the repair talisman, but that's fine. Uh, I think I'll just leave this on the on here for now. I mean, it's pretty handy, but yeah, that was really, really disappointing. I, I, I was expecting at least some decent results to be able to just mine through stuff. And it did take me through a lot of different processing uh, items, which I'm still going to leave for now so that I can still use these items for whatever in the future. But I think I'm going to go the way of uh, building gadgets. But I think I might go for a mining gadget. I've never actually tried these. Oh, there's different levels of mining gadget. I don't think I've ever made these before. What's the what's the third one? Per block costs 200, 200, 200. And each one can store different amounts of energy. How difficult is it to make one of these? A blank upgrade? Okay. I, I, I'm kind of fond of going for like laser beams after trying the mining drill and being very disappointed. So here's something you should know. I have never gone into mining gadgets before. I've all, I've done like the building gadget stuff, but never the mining ones. And this looks really good to me. So let's, it, it just looks really, really cool. Um, <laughs> the rifle uh, effect. So let's try this out. I'm going to go straight for the Mark III because I've already got just about everything I should need for it. Uh, we'll make one of those and we'll make one of those and done. Then I probably put this in the charging station. Yep. And that'll take some time to uh, charge that up. Actually, not too long. In the meantime, I can look for different upgrades. And there's a modification table. Okay, I probably need to make that too. All right, one modification table. All right, candles, you, you got to go. I got to put this down here. There we go. Shift click to insert from your slots or drop upgrade onto this screen. Click upgrade to remove. Okay, well, this thing's fully charged. So let's put this in here. Or better yet, let me look at this thing first real quick because it just looks really impressive. Uh, I thought it was a huge rifle, but it looks more like just a really fancy plasma gun or something like that. Um, if I sneak click, I've got a range increase, size one by one, edit visuals, precision mode. Interesting. Now I see that there's lots of different upgrades in here, like upgrade three by three. That's pretty good for me. I think I'm going to want that make one of those and let's see allows for a three by three mining radius so if i sneak click does not have anything there if i put this in here oh okay now it makes sense it then just goes up there wait can i just have all the upgrades deconstructs blocks right into your inventory oh that's pretty good avoiding one oh that'd be great for cobblestone uh i think i need that yeah, we're putting the void upgrade in there for certain. Which actually, now that I think about it, can I like, do I, how do I set this? Voids blocks. Wait, what? And it says adds filtering too. So if I take this out, sneak right click, edit filters. Oh, filters, cobblestone. So if I use this to mine something, Let's go over here and in fact I've got some cobblestone we'll just put this down um, along here and I'll try mining this block oh wait that's that's one by one I want three by three. Oh, I have to hold the button down or else it just stays there and then the items went back into my inventory okay so edit filters void junk true Maybe that's considered junk. Okay, let's try this again. Yeah, they still went into my inventory. Okay. So blacklist, and I put these on there. Then when I do cobblestone, it should void it. Yes. Yes, it did. And if I have something more valuable, let's say a block of diamond is part of that group and we've got multiples. We'll put cobble there, the diamond here, and then we'll try mining that. Nice. All right, let's go with some other stuff like silk touch. That's always a good idea to get. Now, I would say a magnet, but I've already got one on me, so I'm not as concerned about that. A uh, light placer. Oh, that's brilliant. Freezes water and stops lava in its place. Mm, I don't think I really need that right now. I just want it as a mining tool. Ah, speaking of, let's go with 
Wait, I can't do fortune and silk touch, can I? I mean, I've never tried, but I, I don't think that that would work. Range! Oh, yes, we definitely want that. What's the highest range we can get? Oh, and we can upgrade the battery, which of course requires the previous levels of that as well. And level 3, battery, not a problem. This is a much simpler method, I tell you what. Uh, not as much fun, but it's probably just as mu it, a lot more fun to use. Upgrade efficiency tier 1. Applies efficiency to the mining gadget. Oh, so this is just going to increase its speed. And there we have it, tier 5 efficiency. And if I open this up, let's put all this stuff in here. <laughs> and it's, it's got a little bit of power that it's going to need. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have to be charging for a bit. And speaking of power, I think that there's actually a backpack that only holds 100,000. The accumulator backpack from Immersive, you can actually click it and combine it with whatever chest plate you're wearing, and it will store stuff uh, in your inventory. But th this is going to store 10 million as it is. Speaking of, though, let's see. I think I've got some batteries in here. Yeah, look at that. Nitro batteries, blazing batteries, basic ones. This one will hold up to 4 million, 40 million, 2 billion. Oh, yeah. I probably should have had one of these things sitting in a charger for a while now, huh? So I think it looks like the next thing I'm going to need to do is get into some power. And for that, probably power is the best way to go. Or at least, I like it. It's a fun mod. Uh, it, it does take a bit of setup, though. And honestly, probably could do with like a little rearrange of this corner. It's looking a little bit, I don't know, just messy and things just randomly placed. Because I wonder if these can charge things a bit faster than this can. This is currently, it can hold one million... And I'm not sure how much it actually uh, charges at a time. Because when I look at this, I mean, it's going pretty quick. I gotta say. So maybe the charging station is good, but I figure we could try something like uh, Furnator. I mean, I've got a Magmator, but uh, it's easier for me to burn the coal right now. So let's see if I have any of these materials already in place. I'm going to need to make some dielectric paste, which requires blaze powder. I don't think that that's going to be a problem. Can I make one? Yes, one starter furnator, which I don't know if the future versions need the next one. Yep, there's the starter one. So then if I do this, I can make a basic. Yep, that's now a basic. Then there's a hardened. Oh, that's going to require energized steel, which requires energizing using an energizing orb. And perhaps an energizing rod as well. Those are things that I'll definitely be needing. This is still only about two-thirds of the way. Not even... Yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there. In the meantime, I can still make these other parts. So I think I've got the chicken back here currently plugged in. I do. With some stuff. So let me grab some item pipes. I was going to have multiples... Uh, multiple chickens, but I think I could just get away with the one because it's probably, yeah, it's still backed up with the amount that's in there. I've got five chickens in there right now. What's that? Six chickens in there right now? So let's put down this one. And yep, that's currently generating power. At least it looks like it is. Carbon is in there. It doesn't seem like it's storing, but, or is it because it's powering this as well? Oh, it, it's powering this as well. Okay, so that's just increasing the speed that it goes even faster. All right. With that the case, then let me put this in front of this, and I will make another basic furnator. There we go, and I have another basic furnator, and I can actually remove this here and put another one there. And then this is generating power as well, so that's going up even faster because it's... They're both generating a lot of power, or at least a decent amount. I've, I've, at the very least, increased the speed with which this stuff can charge. And then I can use uh, things like energizing orbs and rods in a bit once I've got these things hooked up so that I can, I don't know, maybe uh, zap them. Uh, I'm just going to set them there for now so they're not in my inventory, and I can remember that I need to take care of those in the future. But I think that this is almost done. Yeah, so I'm going to empty my inventory out, and then we'll go on a little bit of an explore. And there we have it, 10 million all charged up. And then it starts charging this. Well, you know what? We're just going to put that nitro battery in here. We're going to let that charge while we're gone. Because <laughs> I figured, why not? And then we can give this another try. Uh, in fact, how do I make it so that it just... I could probably just aim up. Oh my gosh, that's way so fast. Wow. Okay, and I just, I just decimated 
so much stuff by accident. Whoa, this is a little bit dangerous. Yee. Okay, <laughs> this thing is lethal. Look, oh. Yeah, yeah, a little, little, little dangerous. Still good to have the individual pick for this kind of stuff. Oh, and it's got silk touch. I need to fix that. Uh, edit filters. Need to put this in here as well. There we go. And for the meantime, because I don't have any smooth stone, there we are. Okay, so let's just walk. Okay, let's... I can't run. Uh, apparently this is... <laughs> you can't really run while you're doing this, but it's placing lights and it's zapping things faster than I can slow walk. This is really, really impressive. Okay. I knew it was OP, but I didn't know it was OP. And here's the thing is that I realize now that, that waypoint is actually well below me. So this could be a problem. So I'm going to make a bit of a side path here. And then we are going to go down, I think, uh, at a 45 degree angle, more or less. And see how we do. That Making stairs is not the easiest thing to do. <laughs> oh, and hey, looks like we found our way in. Okay, nice. <laughs> and here we are, in a new area, with lots of new mobs. That's a spider. Don't need that. Okay, killing mobs has not been easier. <laughs> and I even have some ranged options. I realized that I could probably just break these things uh, with my spell, but I can also use this as magic missile shooting. It doesn't do a lot of damage, though. So let's change this to the break spell instead, and then I can use it for those, whoa, one shots on things like this. Oh my gosh, all right, it's getting a little bit crazy with all the uh, attack mobs. Get out of here. Just break that one right in the middle, done. <laughs> now, if I just hold this in my offhand, does that mean that I'm just automatically going to start placing lights? Nope. That would be nice. Oh, I just need to click it. And I can place lights. Doesn't even need to break anything. That's nice. So as you can see, having much stronger armor has made a big difference for me to be able to withstand these kinds of attacks. <laughs> Since last time. So where are these spawners? I know that there's spawners around here. So I'm not finding much, but there are lots of items that I can grab in some of these chests. Excuse me, I'm currently working here. Oh, including silverfish shards. Nice. So all I really need to do is just run around breaking barrels and get, getting the loot that way. And then when my inventory fills up, I just dump a bunch of stuff into my system. Okay, so I wasn't expecting this. I've gone out this far and now you can see the absolute craziness that is before me. Um, I have no idea what that's about. That is ridiculous. I was expecting like maybe some something different, but yeah, it looks like there's giant cave systems, which doesn't make sense to me. And here we have it, regular cave systems and normal ore gen? This doesn't look right, because in fact I'm getting ores now, and gravel, and clay. Oh my gosh, this is so crazy. Okay, maybe this is normal, because I'm now starting to see what looks like the nether at the far distance here. I, I guess I just wasn't expecting to find a whole lot of ores in this area, especially ones like this. 
Dimensional shards? Okay. Okay, it looks like I'm finally getting to the area that I've been looking for, and that is into the nether reaches. Uh, if you look here, yeah, I'm just starting to get to the outer rings, or at least the, med the middle rings, and I see what looks like some kind of crazy um, setup over there that we can go explore today to finish off this episode. And just to show you, you know how fast you can mine another rack already. It's pretty insane when you use this tool. <laughs> and I think I found it. Or at least what looks like an entrance. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. Yep, that's them. Get out of here. I just put all this stuff in my inventory for now because I've just got so much of it. And I don't have any kind of dank nulls or anything like that hooked up just yet. That's on TNT. Let's get rid of that. Well, hello. Th this seems really interesting to say the least and I don't know if the loot's gonna be any better or worse over here oh it's definitely different that's for certain like ancient debris I don't I, I don't think I actually have any means of obtaining that just yet and I don't think I have soul soil either or if I do I've totally just forgotten about it but I'm not too bothered with it at this point, we're just kind of going through here, trying to take things out. Oh, there's there's blazes. That's going to be a thing too, isn't it? Well, that reminds me. I'm going to need those blazes for... Oh, gosh. For making the... Uh, some certain enemies. Oh, my gosh. Would you stop? For uh, getting those little crafting blazes that I need. These, the uh, the blaze burners. Then craft a bunch of these up and go click on the uh, appropriate blazes so, <laughs> so that I can just get in there. Get in there, each one of you. <laughs> so one way for insta-killing blazes, you just put them in your pocket. But that seemed to do the trick. I mean, there's other things that I could do here, but there's a lot of blazes and I'm just trying to find the spawners. Oh my gosh place is ridiculous. Well, I found what I was looking for and that was getting into the nether parts <laughs> so that I can progress a little further with the pack. <laughs> Would you get get out of here? Get out of here. All right. So, I think that that's going to do it just fine for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe. Let me step a little further away so I don't get killed by these blazes. <laughs> and don't be afraid to stop by on Twitch, uh, where we stream regularly. We also have Mischief of Mice 2, the YouTube channel, where we upload our VODs from there on a regular basis. If you are enjoying this, please come back next time. See you guys then.